All right, today we're going to be graphing functions. They're also called the greatest integer function or the round down function. I'll talk to you about that again in a minute. Sometimes in real life functions are represented by a combination of equations, each corresponding to a particular part of the domain. Such functions are called piecewise. Those are the ones we were graphing yesterday. This example is a type of piecewise function called a step function. In this picture, this represents that at Central High School, they held a four, a fund, um, four hour fundraising to pledge drive, and the students organized the drive, and they counted the total money at the end of each hour. Results are shown in this diagram. How much money had the student raised after students raised after two hours? So you go to two hours, and then you go up, and you see an open pole here. So you have to jump up to here to read how much they had raised, which was a B, $1,000. <clears> how much money did they raise in all? Well, that would be at the end of the four-hour interval, which, which uh, uh, dot is solid is the one we need to read, not the open hole. So you notice that it stays flat until they reach the end of an hour because, and then it jumps up because that's when they counted it. That's why this is represented by something that looks like stairs. Okay, so it was $1,800 in all. If x is the number of hours of the drive that have passed, what's the, um, then the function f of x shown in the graph gives the number of dollars raised. What does 3.5 represent? Well, at three and a half hours, they were at $1,500 because they haven't been counting it as they go. So, again, from three hours, it was at $1,500, but at three and a half, it's still at $1,500 because they aren't counting it until they hit the fourth hour mark. What interval does f of x equal 400? So what interval means, how, what values of x does it remain at 400? And that would be from 1, 2, 2. So it includes 1 hour, it goes up to 2, and it doesn't include the 2. What is the domain of the function? Well, when were they raising the money? They were only raising it from 0 to for hours, and that includes both. And what is the range? <clears throat> now the range, you might be tempted to say zero, uh, zero to 1,800, but that is incorrect. There are gaps in the range. The ra this graph is not continuous because it's not connected. Okay, these steps are not connected. So the domain, the range has to be written in set notation, and it has to include all the values that they actually had counted. So it was at zero, of course, for the first hour, because they didn't count it until the end of the first hour, which was then at 400. Then after it was at 400, at the end of two hours, it went up to 1,000. After three hours, they were at... 1500 and after four hours they got to their um, top which was $1,800 so that is when you write down each value for y it is there were times the time didn't stop in between that's when they were selling so that's continuous time okay the domain is continuous from 0 to 4 but the range is in steps, so it's only those certain values. So this is the notation for, you might see the notation with double bars. It's not absolute value bars. And these are brackets, not absolute value bars. They're hard brackets. They stand for the greatest integer function. It's also called the round down function. Definition of this function is on page 102 if you want to go look it up. Um, where the domain is from negative infinity to infinity and the range is all integers. Okay, so the range is all integers, and maybe you don't remember what integers are. The integers are numbers like negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 
0, 1, 2, 3, et cetera, going on and on in both directions. So they're actually the numbers you normally put on a number line. All right, those are integers. Notice there are no what? Yep, no decimals in the range. There's no decimals in the range. The range is just integers. So it's, you'd have to list all the numbers, or you can say the integers from negative infinity to infinity. But you can put in anything you want for x. But what you're going to do is you're going to round the value down. That's what that stands for. So if I want to do the f of negative 3, and the function is the greatest integer function, I would be doing the f of negative 3, which would be, you'd be putting it in here. This would be like what it would look like in a textbook. It says, what is the round, number rounded down to the next nearest integer of negative 3? Well, negative 3 is an integer, so this is the answer. Okay, you don't have to round. There's nowhere to go down. You're already at an integer. Okay, so the answer to that is negative 3. The next one, though, if you do the greatest integer or you round down 2.5, then you have done something because you don't want it to be a decimal. You want to round it down to the next nearest integer. The integer, um, answer to the greatest integer of this would be 2. Rounding 2.5 down would be 2. Negative 1.8. Making sure everybody would understand this. If this is 0, this is negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Uh, rounding negative 1.8, which would be about here. If you round it down, you're going down to negative 2. And if you round 1 half down, then you're rounding it. I went the wrong way. Excuse me. There's positive 1. This would actually be negative 1 half. Here's positive 1 half. If you round 1 half down, you're going down to 0. And if you round negative 1 half down, you're going down to negative 1. Okay. And some of you probably didn't need a number line to do that. So all of the answers that are come out of the integer function are the y values, and they are always integers. We're going to graph this piecewise function right here. We're going to see what it looks like. And maybe that'll help you with some questions that you might have had on the assignment from the piecewise book page. If not, we'll talk about those on Monday. Okay. Um, this says that the values of y, the value of y is 1 when x is between 0 and 1 and not including 1. So if y is 1, for when x is 0, that would be here. Let me get a red pen, make it brighter. And then when I get to, from here to here, 0 to 1, it's flat. But when I hit the 1, it's not included, so I'd have to put an open dot there. The next interval says from 1 to 2, your value of y is 2. So you'd be jumping up to here. And when you get to 2, it's no longer, it's not included, so you have to put an open hole. And then you jump up to 2, 3. 2, 3 would be the next point because it says the value of the function is 3 between x values of 2 and 3. So then I go all the way over to 3, and I have to open hole, make an open hole. Because when it becomes 3, when it's including 3, it's not at 3 anymore, it's at 4. So we got to jump up to 4. That's it for this one. It's done because the range was just 1, 2, and 3. And the domain was simply from 0 to 4, not including the 4. Okay, so the domain of this one was 0 up to 4, included the 0, but didn't include the 4. The x values did not include the 4. Let me put a parenthesis. And the range on this, if you're listing it, would be the values of 1, 2, and 3, including, uh, well, you use a bracket, not, excuse me, not the kind of brackets with the hard soft brackets. You're going to use the face bracket, I like to call it, because it looks kind of like a face. Okay. I hope we understand the difference between continuous and not continuous.
All right, so now we're going to try graphing the greatest integer function between 1 and 4. So I'm going to put in these values. I'm going to use a t-chart. I'm going to put in 1, and if I do that, if I round 1 down, that's still 1, and 2 times 1 is 2, so 1, 2 is on the graph, that's my first point. What if I put in 1.5? Well, if you put in 1.5 in here, you're saying 2 times the greatest integer of 1.5, actually the round down of 1.5. So 1.5 would round down to 1 and it'd be 2 times 1 again, and we'd still get 2. And I'm going to go to 2. If I plug in 2, 2 rounds down to 2, and 2 times 2 would be 4. So 1.52 is on there. But when I hit 2, I jump to 4. So i got to put an open hole here and connect that right there. It's like I made a fat line, which I shouldn't make it so fat, but I'll make it look better. It goes like this. It was at 1, 2. When you got to 2, it didn't include it. So I had to put a hole there because it jumped up to 4. So one and a half, you're still at two, but when you got to two, it jumped. So you have to have an open hole. Yes. I'm trying to get you to understand why it's flat there. So no, I'm not going to keep doing it every time. So I'm trying to just get you to see the pattern before I do it by patterns. Okay, yes. Yeah, it's right there. 1.5 for x, 2 for y would be right there, right? When you get to 2, the answer is 4. Well, you don't need a dot there because I was just trying to get you to go in between there. Okay, what if, what if you did 1.8? It's 2. All right. The point 1.8, if you round 1.8 down, it's 1, and 2 times 1 is still 2. So uh, there's a lot of points in between here. It's like a piece of a horizontal line, and then when you finally get to 2, it's not going to count, and you're going to have to jump up. So these are what they're going to look like. All right? I'm trying to show you why 1.5 gives you a 2. So that you know why it stays flat there. So what's going to happen if I did 2.5? It's going to stay flat until I get to 3. And when I hit 3, this is going to be 6. It's going to jump up to 6. Okay, yes. And I, I did I go out of my domain yet? Because i got to check. It's only asking me to go to 4. Scott? Oh boy. Um, the only ones we're doing today, there is a way that, that I, there is a function out there, a way to get them to turn, but I'm not, no, they're, today they're all going to be little horizontal steps. Okay. When I get to four, then it's going to hit eight. Are we with me now? Now you're going to go, now wait, I got, oh, did it include four though? See, that didn't include it, so we'd get rid of that point. We do not need that graph because it doesn't. It's not actually there. We needed to stop. It only gave us three little bars. They look like sideways balloons, kind of. Okay. Okay. Wait till I show you more patterns. You'll start to get this after we do just a few more examples. All right. So now we're going to do one where the domain's not restricted. Okay. So this one's just the typical greatest integer function. And I'm going to show you something. Grab your calculator, please. Um, I am still, wait, 
I'm going to, I got to say something that I don't really want to be on the, my recording. So I'll stop. Let's try graphing on our graphing calculator. So um, let's go to y equals the course, and then I'll tell you how to get the absolute value, the um, greatest integer function. Go to your math button like we did to find the absolute value. Arrow over to number. Uh, it is not this round one, okay? It is the INT, greatest integer. So it's choice five. Let's pop in an X, and then we'll hit, I'm going to hit zoom six for everybody to have the same looking graph. Now, if you have a newer OS system, one of the newer calculators, it will look just like mine. If you have an older model, it's not going to look like this. It's going to look like they're connected, and they're not connected. Some of the older ones are going to show it looking connected. So, guys, can you listen, please? If you have an older one, you go, or you have one of mine from back there, it may look connected. You can change it so it won't. You can go to mode, right up here next to the second key, change it to not being connected. You put it on back. Yours won't look just like this. This has a Different, a little bit different mode menu than the old ones. But put it on dot, and then it'll show the steps. Okay? All right, so let's move on from there. You see the steps? This is what we're going to graph. You can't even see this step. You have to know what you're doing. You can't see the little holes. You'd have to know what you're doing. Okay, so let's go back. This is only a crutch to just kind of double check yourself, but yours is going to have to look like I'm going to draw it. So when you do zero, you round down to zero. When you get to one, it's going to jump up to one. So from zero to one, it stays flat. And you get an open hole when you hit one. Then you jump up, you go right, open hole at two. Jump up to three, sorry, to two on the Y. Open hole, jump up, and you're just making little steps. And then you have a dot at the very corner top. Then you have to go and do it in reverse. So you go from where we started, go down and make an open hole, go left and make a solid dot one unit away. Jump down and just finish the steps following this pattern so you, they all look the same going uphill. I will not be accepting only part of the graph. If you don't back it up, I'm taking something off. Because some people do it incorrectly. So it's not fair if they do it incorrectly and i got to take something off. And you just didn't do it. You should get something off. Okay? Fair game. Not that hard. All right, three. We're going to find out what doing putting a three in here does to it. So let's make a little T-chart. Because we need to know how to do this by hand. We don't always have one of those fancy calculators by us. This is actually it's faster to do without a calculator. All right, so plugging in zero. You would round zero to zero, and three times zero is zero. This one starts in the same place as the first one. But when you jump over to one, I'm sure you guys are glad. Maybe I'm not speaking in decimals again now, okay, because we're supposed to know what it's doing. All right, so if I put in one, round one down to one, three times one is three. So when I get to one, I'm jumping up to three. So I make a little bar with the hole at the one. On the x-axis, I jump up to three, and I start making my jumps. What are the jumps? I mean, if you put in two, you're going to get six for y. When you hit two, you jump up from the hole to six. And you make your little jump over. When you put in three, you jump up to nine, and I can't fit it on there. So I think I can go backwards one. If I put in negative one, I would get negative three. Okay, does anybody see a relationship between the equation and the steps? Yes. Sort of like a slope. Mm -hmm. it's three is actually the jump between these stairs. Uh -huh. It's how much there's how much space between, how far you jump up. But it is like a slope kind of going up one, right one. But you, but it's only, you know, you could use it. 
steps have three units between them. It stretches the step higher, makes it steeper. Just like it made the um, y values go up faster when we had the v's. And so guess what? You know how our, uh, what did we do? We did our, forgot what we did. We did absolute values. They look like this. And this number stretched it vertically or flattened it. And this one made it go right or left. And this one made it go up or down. This one's going to move. These, these have the same pattern, guys. Okay, so now that I have a two here, that means my steps should shift to the right two. But we can still plug numbers in. I'll show you how that works. Let's always stick in zero first, because this will always work for you. If you put in zero, you get negative two, because you, negative two will round down to negative two. Zero, negative two is where I'm going to begin. It's a step function. If I had put in one, I would get negative one. So there is only one space between the steps, because they, there is an A value of one. So I can start doing my steps. Okay, and then once I get those steps going on the right, I'll go back and finish them off going to the left. All right, you see now, look over here. You see this one? If you shifted it one, two to the right, isn't that what happened here? It's actually shifted over to the right from the first one. All right, so what's this number going to do? Vertical shift up one. Okay, so let's just find out where our first point starts. You put in zero, zero rounds to zero, plus one would be one. So you start here instead of zero, zero, and you have one space, the A value is one. So the steps are one apart. Now, this is where there's consistency, of course. This isn't like a situation like the, the guy selling the stuff where it changed between intervals. Be a consistent, constant rate of change. All right, and of course, you don't need to leave an open dot in the bottom corner because it's not really there. It doesn't count. Open means not there. Okay, so however you like getting started, I think most people it's easiest if we just plug in zero every time right away. Zero, three. Put in maybe one just to check out where the next step is. Negative two plus three is one what's happened if i put in one i get negative two plus three which is one so you can't assume your stairs always go up the stairs are coming down down to right one would be the next stair stair so you can use that like a slope i just proved it by plugging it in they are two steps apart And then we'll get to the next one, and then you'll see something kind of weird. So if A is negative, these steps go down. Now, I was wondering if anybody, I had somebody ask me second hour before I had gotten to this point, if the bars were always, or these little steps were always one wide. And the answer is no, yeah. I can't say always because it's not true because here's the situation where the bars are going to change size. So let's figure out what happened. 
by plugging in some numbers. What does that one half do? Is it going to shrink the steps or stretch them? That's what we got to figure out. Think stretch. Okay, zero, put in, you get one. Okay, if I put in one, I'm going to get one half in here. And what does one half round down to? Zero. So zero plus one is still one. So one, one is on the graph. So let's see what happens when we get to two. If I put in two, one half of two is one. One plus one is two. This is where my jump happens, which means it jumped up when we got to two. So it means this is how long the bar is. It's from zero to two. So you were right that it, stretches it, makes it bigger. So this one jumps up now, up to two, and then it's going to stretch two widthwise and open a hole. And if we go backwards, that's what it looks like. Not that bad, is it? <laughs> All right. Now, if you have a negative in front, it, what did it do it? Yeah, steps down. All right. And they're going to be steps separated by one. So if I put in zero, I still get zero. If I put in one, I get it negative one. So we're just going to do this. I'll just go ahead and finish this one, and I'd like you to do 17 and 18, and I want to come around and see how we're doing. Yep. You're smart enough to put a dot there. Okay, we're going to check uh, number 17 now. Sure. Okay, so this one started zero, put in zero, you get one. Then over when she hit one, it went up to four. The steps were three apart. Okay. This number 18 would have shifted it from here left to two. Should look like this. The steps are one apart on 18. Nineteen. <clears throat> this is going to be hard to fit in here. Guys, I am recording. <laughs> and so you should be having half steps. They are very squished. Okay, what does this number do? I thought we got it straight. It's how far apart are the steps? Yeah, but you didn't then. Okay. <laughs> um, and you can't use it as a slope then, can you? Okay, because if you did that, you'd have to go up a half, right one, up a half, right one. So it does work if you think of your slope that way, but you can't go up one, right two. You'll miss a whole step. So that's why I didn't use it as a slope. So I wouldn't, didn't want you to miss what happens when it's a fraction there. 
I kept plugging in some numbers. Okay, so one half. This number is how a fart, how far, oh geez, a fart. That did not come out right, and I'm paving. How far apart steps are? It's about the second or third time in my 24 years that word came out on accident. Okay, yes. That also happened this year as I was walking around the room. Someone ripped one right next to me. I was like, what do I do now? <laughs> oh, yeah, that happened, kind of. Okay, anyway, I shouldn't talk about things like that, but, you know, they happen. Okay, zero, when I hit one, it goes down to negative three. Okay, are we getting this now? They're three apart and these are going down. I wonder how many people are going to hear this lesson. Okay. Well, I did in one of my classes talk about my mother in the hurricane. Oh, well. It was you guys too. Oh boy. All right. This is going to be shift left one and down two. So I could start it like this. And since the A is positive, I'm going to jump up. It should work like this. If you don't get what I'm shifting, it's okay. You can plug in numbers. Okay, would you like me to do it by plug-in? No, you found that? Okay, yes, that's right. Put a zero in, you would get negative one. So you could start right here and then go backwards. Okay, the number in front of here is a one. Steps are one apart. One apart. These were negative three apart. They were going downhill, but uphill. I'm I'm just wor I'm working very hard at starting the whole year off with with teaching patterns and teaching them by transformation and shifting and everything. So it makes I think it makes it easier. We good on that then now? Okay. All right. Now here again, this is just a, an explanation of how you can put it in your calculator and how you can change the mode to get it connected and not dot it. So it would be dotted instead and won't show those steps like they're connected. All right, um, we're going to write, quick write, a uh, function based for this situation right here. Okay, and we're going to write, it says, write a piecewise function that gives the admission price for a given age. It's going to have multiple steps to it. Children five years old and under are free. So f of x, y would be, or your cost is going to be y. Five years old and under are free. So if you're five, inclusive. So if the values of x, I don't know why I wrote the five first. If the values of x are, which was less distracting to me, are less than or equal to five, then they are, you get to pay zero. Okay. Does that make sense to you now? Children five years and up, including 12 years. So now when X is between five and 12, including the 12, then how much are you paying? They are going to cost $5. So this would be Y would be five. And then children over 12 years and up to and including 18, oh my gosh, what a complicated system here. Children over 12, so X is between 12, but they're over 12, so it doesn't include 12. And including 18, less than or equal to 18, then they're $12. And adults, too bad. That means you're old and you're over 18, right? So if X is greater than 18, 
and you're an adult and you cost $18. No, you're not. Well, I guess you can put in X between 18 and dead. <laughs> you don't need that. <laughs> I know. Oh, you're sorry. What do you mean? Where? Where? Night. 